Romans 8 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit verse 4 that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit okay now here it says that there now no condemnation this is this is what God does for us no more condemnation no more accusation but there is forgiveness so this is grace there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ that when we trust in Christ no more condemnation who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit now so here is the law that we follow the spirit not the flesh that we follow the spirit and not the flesh this is the law that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled so when we walk according to God's law that is um, that is the law that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled now fulfilled is grace that God will accomplish it that God will fulfill it for us God will give us um, and say that because of the of Jesus Christ's forgiveness that you have met the righteous requirement of the law you have fulfilled the whole law you are perfect in the sight of God not because of us it's because of Christ so that part fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled that we can fulfill the law it's not us it's Christ who fulfills for us when we walk according to the Spirit when we trust in God as our Savior and walk according to the spirit that is to to obey the spirit that is the law obey the spirit the spirit guides us that is grace so in every statement we have to discern the grace and the law and uh, so the requirement of the law is fulfilled because of Christ that in God's sight we have we are perfect that is grace in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so here is the law again that we don't follow the flesh but live according walk according to the uh, spirit now let me explain this again to say that there is the law and the grace together no condemnation that is grace to those who are in Christ Jesus now when we trust in Jesus that is law also who do not walk according to the flesh that is the law but according because it's what we do whatever we do is the law it's what God does for us to bless us that is grace what God does to us to tell us what to do tell us to obey that is the law okay so God also give us the law God doesn't just give us grace God give us the law also to obey him that is the law so the requirement of the law will be fulfilled in us that is grace that we have fulfilled the requirement of the of God's law because of Jesus It's Jesus who make us fulfill the law we cannot fulfill the law even when we obey God in every possible way we can when we we will love God, we preach the gospel, we help other people. Still, we're not perfect. So we can never met, we can never meet the righteous requirement of the law. We can never uh, come to be perfect. It has to be from God. We are never, never perfect. So that's God's grace that we have fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law that God has given us, the fulfillment because of Jesus Christ and we don't walk according to the flesh that is the law uh, because that's what we do and according to the spirit when we walk according to the spirit is still the law but the spirit guiding us that is grace the spirit give us strength and guide us to walk according to the spirit that is grace that what God does to help us to follow the Holy Spirit that is grace but when we walk that is the law okay so I hope that we all understand each statement uh, 
uh, there can be law and the grace together. Okay, the outline, Romans 8, not, uh, 1 and 4. God is a forgiving God because Jesus has paid the price of all sins. So Jesus has paid the price, so he forgives us. He has total forgiveness for those in Jesus, and people in Jesus would walk according to the Spirit. So the first part is there is no condemnation, no condemnation that God, uh, God forgive us because Jesus has paid the price. So we have total forgiveness and no condemnation. And then people in Jesus would walk according to the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit would guide us and motivate us to walk according to the Holy Spirit. That is God's part. God's part is to motivate us and give us strength to walk according to the Holy Spirit. When we walk according to the Holy Spirit, that is the law. What we do is the law. The Holy Spirit guiding us, that is grace. The Holy Spirit guides all born-again Christians to live in, a, in godly ways. So this is grace. God guides us. Those who follow the Holy Spirit will have no condemnation. So when we follow the Holy Spirit, there is no more condemnation. Why many Christians follow the flesh? Because there is the pleasure of sin. When people watch pornography, when people yell at each other, when people take advantage of other people, steal other people's money, they think that they earn something. But actually, it's foolishness. They don't earn anything. They will lose everything. The Satan will have a way to enter their life and steal from them. So this, the reason why the, uh, the Christians follow the flesh is because they are, have been deceived by the devil. They have been deceived by the devil. They are cheated by the devil. And they follow the flesh and they think that they earn something, but actually they lose it. And also, Christian might think following God is too boring, but actually this is also a lie, because we can enjoy God every moment. God is so wonderful, God is so wonderful, God is so wonderful, God is so good, so we enjoy God. Okay, and um, how we can live in Jesus and walk according to the Spirit and have complete forgiveness. So how we can do that? To live in the Spirit and walk according to the Spirit and then have complete forgiveness. So, so here this verse, it says that no condemnation is forgiveness to those who walk according to the flesh. It's not just to Christians who do nothing. When a Christian do nothing at all, then he's not having a, a, a relationship with God. Now how about people who, are, you know, who believe in Jesus uh, on his death? bed, then even when a little showing of his spiritual life is also his fruit. So even a Christian who die before he dies that he believes in Jesus, when he says, I believe, that already is a manifestation of God's life. But if the person doesn't really have a change of life, he you know, he says he believe, but he really doesn't know what he believes, and he doesn't really repent, he doesn't really hold on to Jesus, then he might not have salvation. So we want to explain to people on the deathbed very clearly that God is so good, He died, sent His Son to die for us, He gave us eternal life. When you trust in Him, you are free from hell, and you have all the blessings. So make sure you repent and count all your sins and say, Lord, I'm full. I'm sorry for my sins and please forgive me to help people to be sure about their salvation because no condemnation is for people who walk according to this, the Spirit. Now, it doesn't mean we're saved by walking according to the Spirit. We're saved by grace through faith when we trust in Him. But when we are, when we are born again, when we, are, when we are saved, for sure, we want to follow Him. We want to walk according to the Spirit. When a person is born again, he wants to follow God. He wants to love God. He wants to obey God. And these people, they, the righteous requirement of the law has been fulfilled 
because Jesus will give it to us that those who don't walk according